Hi, Amanda Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. I have ordered a kit. I want to do some uh, electronic construction and I'm hoping one of these is it. If not, it's just a random unboxing again. Um, booyah! No, it's not kit. I kind of, I think the Booyah oversold this. Um, in fact, it's got one of these little Panda CDs a bit worrying. I'm hoping it won't need this. But yeah, this isn't particularly exciting. This is for testing retro nets. <laughs> And it's basically just a um, PC serial port. Woohoo! Yoikes, that's good. Um, although, I'm not sure RetroNet's technically pinned out to go straight into a PC serial port. You might need a uh, null modem twister twister. Anyway, that's what it would kind of do. Let's put that aside though. That's not of interest to me right now. It's this pack. This is by uh, Needful, Thing Needful Things. Needful Things. If you remember, there's a Rick and Morty episode where the uh, devil set up a shop indeed called Needful Things. Yep. Let's hope the devil is in the detail when it comes to this packaging. Uh, 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 nice. <gasps> yes. This is an electronics kit. It is not only just an electronics kit, it is an electronics kit with an enclosure. That's how they're pronounced, an enclosure. Let's have a look at the guide though. It's a digital clock. It is a digital clock indeed. Be careful how you say that. Don't say it fast. Digital clock, digital clock, blah, blah, blah. There are no instructions provided for these kits from the manufacturer, so I decided to write a guide. I hope it helps. That will help, but I'm pretty sure viewers of this channel don't want me to use a guide. But let's use a guide, it's fine. Install and solder in resistors. Taking note that R9 and 10 are 10K and the others are 1K. Well, that's not too bad, there's only two sizes. I'm going to use POVA, POVA crazy, although he's saying it's power, but it's two Vs, it's definitely POVA. Brian Jones's resistor bender. I'm gonna give a, give a, have a go on his bender later. Install and solder in C1, C2 capacitors. Install and solder in the crystal oscillator. Install and solder in S1, S2 switches. Install and solder Q1, Install and solder. Yeah. Install and solder buzzer, blah, blah, blah. Do not install battery yet. Please note polarity sensitive. Oh, okay, great. These are. I think they're okay. You know, they're okay instructions. Um, solder in everything and power it up. Um, thanks for providing. I'm not going to slag you off on the instructions. Um, because someone who doesn't know what they should be doing um, would really benefit possibly from those. Uh, the main part from me though, my takeaway is about the resistor values being two different kinds of resistor. That helps me because I cannot do resistor values. So I think I'm just gonna start. I, I kind of was gonna go and have a coffee, but you know, I, I'm happy enough to start the kit. Uh, now this kit is a little bit different than a lot of kits in that it actually comes with an enclosure. So I think what we'll do, which will be a bit of fun, let's have a little look at the enclosure first before we just get into the more mundane, shall we say, more procedural aspect of just soldering it all together. No, oh, There's something weird about cling film wrapping. If you've ever seen it on pallets where they use a really thick not thick, but wide, wide version of cling film, and they wrap it around a pallet, wrap it around a pallet. You kind of think, okay, that's cool. And then you just try to fetch it off, and it just binds to itself and turns into a friggin' rope and tries to cut through your hands. So, uh, you know, it's one of those interesting materials. So this looks like a laser cut, and I'm just gonna examine one piece up close to my eyeballs. Yeah, I think it is. I'm gonna show each laser cut. This is a laser cut, laser cut clock enclosure. <laughs> And I think you're supposed to epoxy it together, or maybe it'll just lock itself in. And you're going, why is it that weird brown color? The reason it's that weird brown color is that it's got paper on it. So when you get things that are made out of laser cut stuff, the Perspex has paper on it, um, which kind of it's good. It protects it from mach the machining operations. But also, uh, in terms of lasery stuff, it's good too because it'll actually absorb the light better. Too. So I think that's it. This is a screw together case, by the way. You see those? Those are for the screws. And let's hope. Yeah, it's got loads of screws in it. That's cute, isn't it? So this kit was about six, seven pounds. So it wasn't. It's not going to break the bank. Um, and it is for a clock. But I'll tell you what. There's something that really 
really, 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 really attracted me to this kit. And you are going to love this. You're going to love it because you're all tech nerds, technoids. Do you see how I said that? Technoids. Like um, I'm from um, New York. You're a bunch of technoids. I think I'm like in Sopranos now. The reason I like it is that it actually does have an onboard backup battery, which so many cheap clock kits don't have. So to me now, when I saw that, I was like, wow, this actually makes it a usable thing because there's no point having a clock which loses its time when you unplug it. Um, it uses standard USB wire. It came with a standard USB wire to a port, which is cool, so it can run off any sort of phone charger you might have. But also, in case it gets knocked out, you can still just you know plug it back in and it's going to work because it's got that onboard battery. So that's really this is great buck whoever invented this kit they've done a good bloody job of that i like that right so this uh main ic here is a 15f 204ea by stc a 15f 204ea it sounds suspiciously like a pick type clone um or it could be a driver chip i'm not sure you don't probably need that many pins really for this but it's got a lot so it's a bit odd and then you have a DS1302, and I don't know what a DS1302 is. Again, if you're playing along at home, feel free to have a look at those, see what they are, and let me know. There's only one other piece of equipment we need when we're doing kits, and that is, if you're me, electronic multimeter, because I need that to work out what the resistors are. Um, I heard there's actually parts tester kits available really quite cheaply for six or seven quid. So if someone wants to send a link to one of those for me or send me one, send me one they want me to build, it's even better, um, please do and I will get on to that. It's got a light sensitive, see that? A light sensitive resistor right there. That's uh, odd. So that means it might go uh, dim in the dark, which is nice because, you know, sometimes these lights can be a bit old, uh, a bit too bright, can't they, when you're uh, trying to sleep and they're like... Eh, eh, eh. So these are the 1K resistors, apparently, and these, uh, well, hang on. <laughs> it's saying you have two resistors that will be 10K and the rest are 1K. I'm thinking these are the 1K, but let's see if they've given us an extra resistor there. I think they have. Get your multimeter out. If you don't know resistors like me, just pop your multimeter back into resistance mode, which it is in, and then you can just hold it up test each side of the resistor don't take long bang 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 10k so yes these are 10k and they look like they've given you an extra one so they're saying resistors are 9 and r10 are the 10ks so let's have a look on the board there's r9 right there and r10 two next to each other let's just jump straight in and start the old process on that and don't worry i'm going to zoom in the camera now, just having a quick look at this doodad that Brian sent me. Um, apparently, this is to get your legs right. Get your legs appropriately akimboed. So let's just see if that is doing the trick for me. Uh, that's the wrong one. So there's another setting on here. Bit tighter. Let's get those legs a bit tighter. Not heard that before. I'm going to make a mark here because this is the one I want to use. And let's see, Brian, this one's not going to be perfect because it's been pre-bent. I had to bend it again, but yep, yeah, that, that's good. Ooh, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. I know I was sort of slagging you off about that, but I like that. That is actually a handy, handy thing. I believe if you go on Thingiverse, it looks like a Thingiverse type thing. I'm going to do a bit of a, a different thing today where I can. I'm going to top solder. These are properly uh, nicely done on a double sided PCB. So it means when I'm doing my tack solders now, I'm just, I don't worry, I will zoom in at some point, show you. In fact, I'm going to zoom in and show you now because <laughs> there's not going to be mess. Well, there'll be lots of opportunity if I do all the other ones this way too. You can see if I just hold the soldering iron to the pin from the top I can actually feed it in and through capillary action it'll draw it through to the, the, the bottom edge which it has done nicely there that's why they're not falling out then that gives me the opportunity oh what did I touch I touched something burny mm, with my soldering iron I've done some damage to some plastic somewhere I can just go and anyway what I was going to say is I can just finish off the soldering 
from the proper side. Um, and while I'm searching for my side cutters, I'm also going to pass my eyes across the uh, deck here to see what I may have hit with my soldering iron. So be careful with the old irons if you're flicking them around. You uh, might hit something and uh, do yourself a mischief or do a mischief to something you don't want to mischify. Mischify. Right. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> At least nine other resists. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there, yeah, they're giving you plenty. I'm just going to process these now. Let's let's just bulk process them. So we're going to just take them off the. I'm going to say spool. I don't know what it's called. I've been doing this for a while, and I still don't know what it's called because, quite simply, it doesn't matter. One, two. In fact, let's just get these all out. There we go. Get them out. Get them out. Oh, I wish this just did loads at once. Oh, could you do loads at once? <laughs> you can do three at once, I think. Yeah. Boom. Like a machine. Let's get another three. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I've got a little production line there. I think we need one more if my uh, counting is to be trusted. So I'm going to leave that there. Good. So we'll just pop those through. So clocks are interesting because they uh, there's something that we don't really need anymore in their traditional form. Yet yeah, very handy when you do need one. So you don't always have your phone. So there's certain scenarios where you might not have your phone. You might not have your phone in your bath. You might not have your phone in a cupboard. You might not have your phone in a plane. No, you will have your phone in a plane. But yeah, you get you get my uh, I meaning. I say you got my idea. You get my meaning though. If this this could be useful, I've actually taken down uh, some wall clocks from the back office. I had two clocks, and uh, since taken them down because my children wanted some clocks, analog clocks. And I thought, I'm not going to invest in any more analog clocks. And I've got these wireless wonders sitting there. I've got my pot here, my little resining pot. I just wanted to see if uh, I could come up with a soldering idea. Bear with me. I think I'm um, searching around. Here's my some Spider-Man. They have to be uh, Spider-Man cups because, look, I thought I'll just do that. <laughs> that is genius. That works, doesn't it? That works. Camera, focus. That way, all the components are just dingy dangling. And I could just attack them from the top. Now, if you've got solder paste, uh, which I have got, but I'm not going to bother getting it out for this, you could just squeeze a bit on these pins. And uh, yeah, just touch the soldering iron and you're done. You don't, you won't, it's not going to be the same amount of effort even as this. But I'm not going to do that. And it's not because I don't want to show you, because I do. It's because I don't have the syringe applicator, so I kind of have to jam a pen, <laughs> a sharpie, in the end of the syringe. And it doesn't really let me control it as well as I can, you know, need to. And as such, it would make this job a worse job. So all of those, yeah, they're all in there. I'm just going to do the same on the other side. I don't think I'm going to solder these from underneath. I don't think it's necessary. These look really nice through plated through hole um, holes. So I'm going to trust that they are a good job. And uh, if it doesn't work at the end, then you know it gives me something to try as a debug. That won't take very long. But yeah, that's that's good. That's pretty good actually. I guess the only danger of that is that you can't really side cutter it. Well, you can side cutter it, but you're gonna when you side cutter it, it's gonna be pretty close to the the board here, so it might be tricky to solder them later if you wanted to. But uh, uh, they're all I can just see they're all soldered right through. That one probably. That's soldered right through, but you know, I want to. I'll give it a little touch up. There we go. 
done. So let's just chop those all off. Bish, bish, bish. Now if you uh, do these projects a lot, I'm throwing these away, but don't throw them away. Don't throw your little wire legs away because you always need wire for jumpers. And I've never really bothered to work out Oh no, there is one here that isn't even soldered in at all. <laughs> Hang on. Did that that guy. That guy. There's always that guy. You didn't want to be that guy, but you did. How did that one get missed? Too much chatting and not enough concentration, I think. Anyway, he's in there. Let's not worry about it. He's in there. We're gonna attack it decently from this side. Through the jungle of legs that's sticking up. Now we can continue our trimming. Yeah, I lost my thread there, but it was more or less about these little bits of wire. Um, you'll always need them for jumpers. If you're doing anything with Veraboard, you can use them for interconnects and Veraboard jumping. I mean, it's useful. Uh, I don't know what the gauge is of component legs. I wish I knew because then I could buy a roll of the wire. But even if I buy a roll, it's not gonna be as good as this because this stuff is already straight and you can use Brian's type of tool like that look and make yourself a nice little jumper it looks like a staple <laughs> don't use a staple though staple stainless steel it's not gonna solder so well right so that's all of the legs chopped off so that's the worst done with you know to be honest that's all the resistors in one go resistors always take the time now if you really want to because you're a completionist and a perfectionist and I'm kind of wrapping my solder back around the bloody thing. Um, what you can do is just go through then and you can just touch them all up like that. Okay, and that's it. So you can just do that. You have to make that noise when you're doing it. So what else do we have here? This is cute. This is a crystal oscillator and that's what keeps the time. Now, if you're playing at home, guess this, the frequency and I'm gonna tell you. It is three, two, seven, six, eight, three. I think it's gonna be 32.768 Hertz. Um, do the math, people, do the math. You can work it out yourself. How many seconds in a day, yeah? 24 times 60 times 60 and that will be kind of a divider that this thing is running at 24 times 60 by 60 and that's going to be 32,000 uh, whatever that read I guarantee you although it probably might be something more like 10 times faster than that or 100 times and then this whole circuit will be doing an internal divider in the microcontroller. So the micros will run faster than real time, it'll run mega time. So it'll take something like this and then it'll probably run 10 times faster than the oscillator uh, but internally you'll know that every 10 flips is a second and then you'll work everything out that way. The reason you need things to work faster than real time is that your clock is going to be updating its screen because it's going to be multiplexing and doing all sorts of trickery like that. And if you have it all in per second, can you imagine your display that will be like, uh, uh, uh. you'll see the numbers rolling over effectively, which is not good enough. Not good enough at all. So we have a few ICs and they come with look, little proper nice little carriers and everything, holders. Um, hmm. So let's just see how this will go. <laughs> I like that there's switches and stuff, um, but unfortunately for us, they put the silk screen on both sides. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't know which side to put the switches on. So everything is pretty much going on the back, apart from the plastics of the screen. So good. That's all I can say. Good to that. This is by far, I'm telling you, I've done a lot of kits, and this is by far the most realistic type kit, well, apart from you know, these pins being bent, a bit disappointing. Um, realistic type clock kit I've seen. I mean, they've really taken a reasonable amount of care, he said, bent, unbending their pins. Um, in the actual design of this, I mean, it's a shame these are a bit pantsed, but that's okay, we'll get them right. They're all right, they're all right. Maybe what I'll do actually, I'm just gonna put the chip 
onto that first because that'll push all of those pins down. Now the, pin, the chip itself might be a bit doolally. It is a bit doolally. Yeah, come on guys. You could have done a bit better on that. I'm uh, a little bit disappointed with you. Please try harder. But I, I forgive you. I forgive you because I love you. Ah, oh, come on now, Andrew. Don't screw this up. Do should I start referring to myself in the sort of third person? Andrew likes a good assy. There we go. Mmm. Okay. That's it. So I'm going to put the uh, notch in the notch, which isn't a Minecraft reference. And could have done a bit more bending on those. I'm just no. Bending the chips. So if you've got these, by the way, just roll them. Roll them like that. Roll them. Don't try to bend them. I don't know individually or with some crude tool. You don't need it. Just roll them carefully, and they will obey your authority. So that's them. They're all going in, in the right place. Just gonna push them through. And again, the reason I'm doing this is because I want all of the pins in the actual chip thingy be nice and straight too. So now now they're locked in more or less by the actual IC. I can try to fix those. So this is more of a, a tutorial on how to repair the uh, bent pins on something that you get. Good. Well, I think they're uh, pretty much okay. If you're doing this yourself though, you know, you could try to do it without putting the chip in and then you don't risk damaging the chip. But, uh, I'm a bit blasé about all that damaging the chip malarkey. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, Static will kill it. Static will kill it. Well, I haven't electric shocked myself with static for a while, so I think I'm all right. He says with its nylon jumper on. So just try to get one pin soldered on that nicely and then just keep it held. I want that to just sort of really set so I can have a look at it. Another little look. Notches the right way. Now I'm going to go for the opposite corner get that opposite corner hit. Push it down with your soldering tip while you're doing it. Get a little bit of pressure so it won't move. Blow on there and that is looking sweet. It's looking sweet like a nice tasty treat. So if you've got something to hold your PCB, use it now. Now's a good time. I don't. I'm just going to wazzle it across. Wazzle, wazzle, wazzle and dazzle. Keep them going. Keep them slick. No! It's dancing. It's dancing, but I don't want this dance. This, It's giving me a merry little jig. That's fine. I caught it in time. What are these? It's sort of rhyming today. That's fine. I caught it in time. Chop, 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 guys. Keep it going. Chop, 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 chop. Yep, 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 yep. By the way, don't put your uh, LCD, or rather LED screen on. If you put that on first, you'd have been stuffed on this design, wouldn't you? <laughs> you wouldn't be able to get to any of these pins. I think that's why you put that in the instructions. Probably a few too many complaints. Can you imagine how much action? You'll be doing a bit of solder suction action. Now, I've got to hold this in by hand on this side now because I uh, have the chip in the other one, so I can't put it flat to the deck, but that's okay. I'm just going to tack it on there. Hold it for a minute. And by minute, I mean um, about a second. So that's the two, corner to corner, looking flat, gorgeous. Let's just get those last few in. So winter is a coming. It's feeling pretty bloody cold this morning when I was out there in my little, me little lycra, me little lycras. Let's get that chip in, which means more time, I suspect, fixing calculators. I might be doing some calculation fixing. Battery in. Uh, positive, negative. That's an interesting uh, quandary now because it's like which way around does that go? And also this was designed with some nubbins. It's got some nubbins on the bottom which aren't going to help you. You don't want those because there's no nubbins on this uh, footprint. They've not been drilled out so... Uh, glass reinforced plastic so one little slip and away your finger goes so be very careful with that 
glass reinforced plastic. That's nice though, nice touch. So the battery, let's see how, I think I'm just gonna put the battery in. This nice, lovely little lithium cell. I'll put it in and probably take it out just to see which way around. So it clips that way. So that means positive is this end. So that's that big end. So we need to solder it that way. So these are a bit tricky. These are uh, soldering type tabs that do lend themselves to solder paste. But again, I'm not going to do the solder paste way to just show you how I would approach it if I were you and you don't have any. So you'll get something like this if you ever fix your car key rings. I mean, it's quite common. So I've just tax, tack soldered one properly by tinning the pad and then putting it on and then soldering. So I'm going to do the same to do, but I'm just going to lift it up ever so slightly so the tip of the soldering iron is actually underneath it. It's actually sit my soldering iron is sandwiched between the pad and it. And see when I let go it just dropped straight down with a lovely, lovely solder. Mm. So that's that's never going anywhere. That's that's a that's a good job. That's a good job. I could be babe there. Pig. Pig in the sea. So C1, C2, C3, C4. Let's all have a thumb war. Get that in there. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. So just sort of having a look see to see what I can see. Got some kids running around here screaming. Again, it looks like they've given us an extra capacitor. So they're being very generous with these uh, components. That's fine. Again, these are sort of just a bit wishy-washy, wobbly components. So just tack those in and then flip it over. Check you're happy, uh, which I'm going to say I'm not. Push it through a little bit more. There we go. And then another one. Push that through. Both good. Got that there. It's dancing. It's dancing, but I'm moving. I'm moving to the beat. I can hear my children screaming in the garage next to me. As children do. So let's let's have a look at this and see. See where we are with everything. So we've got a interesting transistor which I think is to do with the buzzer. So the transistor is to do with the buzzer. So that's what's giving the buzzer drive power. So it's the buzzer driver. Let's just get that in. I'm really, I'm really being quiet about a couple of the components that I see that I need to fit, but I don't know what they are. Uh, so I'm slightly worried about that, that I might have to waste time by going online and seeing what they do. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to fess up. So we've got power here, clearly, and we've got the buzzer there. So we've got two components, a GM and an RM. So we've got one of these, which looks like it could be a thermistor, which would be a temperature thing. Measure temperature. I don't know if this does temperature. And here you've got the light sensitive uh, solder cell. And I think the photocell, let me have a look at the instructions, does say GM photocell and RM temperature sensor. Whew. So I did have to refer to those instructions. So I was a little bit of a silly sausage by slagging off the instructions. Um, mm, 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 mm. I'm very glad that I didn't rush ahead and solder that though, because look, you see this enclosure I did notice there's three things on there there's actually holes holes for those do you see what I mean there's actually holes for those GM and RM and all of those bad boys so leave the GM and RM away for now fit the switches and then we'll work out how they align with that otherwise you'll become scuppered good so just remember that though GM is the uh, uh, photo resistor. There we go, that's S2 in. Kind of a tight footprint, guys. Not too bad, though, but you know. 
maybe they've designed, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And They designed it that way to make it fit nice and positive so it's easy to construct. Solder. A bit more solder. Again, screaming children in the background. Does not settle the nerves when you're trying to uh, assemble some microelectronics. Does this count as microelectronics? I kind of think anything with through hole is almost borderline. <laughs> Has a microcontroller on it, so yes, I guess that does count microelectronics. So you see this seal, by the way. This is, uh, they always say this remove after washing, and sometimes you'll see this in devices. Um, that is literally what it says. Once you've constructed your PCB, you can remove it after you've washed it. Uh, or just leave it on if you want the buzzer to be a bit quieter. I'm going to leave it on until later. But I don't think I really need to wash this PCB. We didn't use any additional flux at all. The PCB board was clean. The components were lovely and clean. So I didn't need to use any flux there. And not, not only that, there's not really any components that need a massive amount of flux. It's all pretty good. There wasn't one surface mount among it. One surface mount among it. You're saying, well, do you really need flux for surface mount? Mm, yeah, you're right with that. Right there, not always. Not for new stuff. Handy for removing stuff, but if you've got big ICs, can be good. <sighs> Get out of my face. Get out of my face, you filthy smoke. So that's it. That's it. Everything now apart from the LCD display. And, uh, sorry, LED display. I always say that. Looking at it though, it's fine because we can get to the temperature sensor and the light sensor afterwards. Whoa, that's cute, isn't it? Look, it's just this little teeny, teeny, two little bits. It's not like it runs the length of it. Hmm, that's nice. So it's already multiplex. This is a multiplexing um, unit. So what it means, it's probably got a common uh, cathode, common anode, I don't know. Uh, I always forget which is which, doesn't anyway. So all the other pins basically control one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, the seven segments and the decimal point, and there'll be another pin that just controls this blinky blinky in the middle. And um, there's uh, four other pins and it will multiplex between them, yeah? So the, the controller will just display zero, and then it will go into the next one to do one, and then the next one to do two, and then the next one to do three. And do you remember I said there was a ten times multiplier, a hundred or whatever on the microcontroller? That's because it's doing that and your eyes won't see it. Your eyes will not see that zooming past. Um, does not have a notch though. So there is a danger. Of putting it the wrong way around. So you've got a square pin here. Yeah, I'm going to try to show you that. That pin is square. That'll be pin one. And then if you look ever so closely at this die, see in there? There's a little one. There's a little, little one. And I'm going to just assume that's the one we want. These are the droids you're looking for. Otherwise, I'm going to be taking this off. <laughs> no, I don't want to be taking it off. Good. Let's just hit it. Hit it, hit it with our hot hotness. I'm hot to trot. Pin one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Opposite pin one. Oh yeah. Once you got those, it's all pretty much plain sailing. Seven pounds kit, hey? This is good good value. This is a real thing. This could have been a real product, this PCB. A real kind of crude product in from in the 80s but yeah um, we don't uh, have tend to have through hole components on real products these days mm -mm -mm, but it's really well made I uh, remember kits for clocks from back in the day too especially mains kits they were really crap they were using very old logic and all sorts of crudeness and uh, not great but this is that combination. It's almost retro. You're using microcontrollers and fancy modern chip stuff with through hole. So you're kind of, this is like electropunk, electropunk PCB. Wow, I'm really excited. Look, we're nerdy there. Oh, I could almost peel that off. No, no, we're not going to peel it off till we test it. As is the law of this land. Right, let's get that apart, rip it apart. 
So we know our board is going to go in here in those lovely holes. What is it, Skip? I said skip, but that's more like flip. I, I kind of get confused because when I was a kid, we used to watch Flipper, 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 Flipper the dolphin. He likes to flip. He's covered in jizz. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, they had in uh, Australia, there was something called like a Skippy, I think. Skippy, Skippy, Skippy the bush kangaroo. That's all I know though, we didn't have it. That's, it's like, it's weird. It's like, how would you know the song if they don't have it? No idea. It's just one of those things that have pervaded the culture. Look, there's a little temperature sensor sticking out. Sticking out like a little nibbly nibble, 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 nibble. Focus, focus. I think that's fine, that'll do. That'll do the trick pig. Mm. Gonna leave it like that, but I'm just gonna tap it with the solder from the top. Tap it from the tap. Yo. Sounds like something Snoop Dogg would say when he's making a kit. I'm not saying any way I am Snoop Dogg. I'm definitely not Snoop Dogg compatible in coolness. Although maybe you might disagree. If you disagree, please say, Andrew, you are as cool as Snoop Dogg, if not cooler, actually, because I've never seen Snoop Dogg um, do some 3D printing or fix a laser cutter or do any of those things. In fact, I've not seen Snoop Dogg do any of those practical subjects ever, and I don't think he can. Yeah, say that. Boom, that's back in. Let's get our sensor in it, light sensor. These do not have a polarity, so you're good to go, whichever way you want. Now, I thought that the um, this thing, the temperature thing, was a bit high, but it's fine. The higher, the better, really, on temperature, but light thing doesn't have to protrude too much. I don't really want it to, so I'm going to take a little bit more care when I lock that in. There we go, he's locked in. And look, that's just probably about surface mount. Good. Same trickery. I'm not going to like tilt it because it will just, you know, decombobulate, but you can see that it's not protruding out the acrylic either end. So get in there. This is not soldering. Arrgh. There you go. Let's turn it around. I think this is, this is where you need to do the uh, bottom side nice and easy. Nice and even. Nice and even. That's it. Done. Mm. Get it off. Get it off. Get it on. Right. That is uh, ooh, alarmingly near completion. So the only thing we've got left is the battery, which I could just slip in like that. I'm going to take off the remove the washy washy. Wishy washy. It's Panto season two. We'll unwrap our. Quite nice. Oh, quite. It's two foot long, by the way. No, maybe it's even three. Mm. It's long, half a meter, shall we say? Let's let's settle on half a meter. And the moment, the moment of truth. I'll even turn off the soldering iron so we have for silence. Let's do it. I love you. Mm -hmm. Woo! That's cute. It's doing it. It's doing it, and it's digging it. Twenty-seven. Ah! Oh, that's a lovely beep too. Mmm, that is a fine, fine piece of kit. That kicks kit ass. It's, uh, yeah. Now I'm just gonna wipe it with my sleeve. I don't want any thumb prints on the front where you can see it. Oh yeah, I'm just getting solder flux on my thing. Oh well, that's good enough. So that means we've got enough components, basically. We didn't need any of those other things. So bear with me, and we're going to do the final thing. Now this is, oh, I'm going to say a swear word, um, but this is a family friendly channel most of the time. When you get the paper on your thing that's been lasered, sometimes, like now, it's hard to get off because the paper has almost become one. It's almost become one with the object because it's it's got a, an adhesive on it. And if you can imagine, the lasers hit that, 
so it's all kind of bonded. So on the edges, it's like seared, sealed, like a predator. Um, ah, cool. Just notice there's a hole on the uh, back for the buzzer too. So you might need to do something with like maybe a little knife like here where I'm just sort of trying to create a nick, but you don't want to do it too deep because you might hit the acrylic and make a, a nasty dink, which is the uh, Peter Dinklage in your uh, piece of paper. And uh, that will not be good. If you've got them, maybe some of those white gloves would uh, be good here because you don't want to fingerprint up this if you can help it. Or you can just give it a nice good clean when you're done with a special cleany cloth. This one's really like raggedy. Someone's already had a go at that for me. Thank you. So this construction method you'll see now is quite interesting. So if you've got laser cutter, you can actually get programs that will generate enclosures for you. And you can opt for this as a, a, a mechanism for closing your box, for securing it all. And it'll automatically put these in. So it's a nut and bolt construction mechanism. And it's quite good. It's, it's mechanically very good. I've got 3D printers that use it in their construction. They're made of thick um, polycarbonate, uh, which is not too dissimilar from this material. And yep, they just sit there banging away, going, rrr, 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 rrr. and you know, there's a lot of movement, a lot of stresses and strains, but these uh, seems to work. It probably works to its advantage because at least it uh, allows some amount of pliability in the device uh, and something that you can always tighten up later if you need to but I've never had to tighten anything up so you imagine if, if it was all glued together that might be fine too or it might fracture at certain places because that glue is so rigid you know and there's going to be always intolerances in it it means you'll be creating stresses in that uh, device if it's especially something mechanical that moves so it'll find somewhere where that stress is going to be wearing on something so it might wear out your mechanic stuff or it might just start you know shattering a bit of the plastic or shearing a uh, a glue joint or something you don't want that you don't want it so these are fine it's a pretty good mechanism for it almost there guys sorry you've been very patient uh, this is weird Look, it's got actually a uh, clear plastic one on that side very odd Maybe from a different batch. Six quid. Well, seven maybe. I can't remember. I'll get the link for you. But yeah, seven quid, including this. Look at all this fun we're having together. It's almost. I think we. It's. It's certainly a kit which you'll get done in under an hour. It's, which is nice if you're like me, where you're impatient. Um, a bit grubby on that one. I'll make sure I put the clean one on the inside so I can wipe that on the outside later. Yeah, so if you're impatient like me, that's pretty quick assembly. I suspect we're at about 45 minutes or something in. Um, I suspect we might be an hour purely because of all the fiddling with the nuts and bolts. So if you ever got a Meccano kit, you do buy these Meccano kits, you can get them, which are quite small versions of like the big box Meccano to sort of compete with Lego at Christmas where they do the little, you know, little motorbike or a little car Meccano kit. And it just takes forever. That nuts and bolts construction, although it's kind of engineering, it's tedious. Tedious as heck. Right, that's it. Let's do this thing. It's got a lot of uh, detritus now on the board, so just trying to keep all these separate. Looking at them, they've got sort of Phillips type heads on them, and that's pretty much it. Let's see, how do we start with this? I guess we're going to start with the front panel going to be that one and we're going to start with this piece of paper to put it on so we don't want to scratch anything so just to show you I'm just going to first get the top lined up <laughs> blowing gently we know the top will have to go this way because that's the way the components go in relation to the front so then I can show you there's only one screw which is kind of neat so what I'm going to do is just take one of the screws and fit it through from the front 
and then I'm just going to loosely put a nut. Um, you're not always going to be able to do this, whereas you're going to have to put the nuts in after on some of these, which are going to be a pain, but this one I can put the nut in in advance. Get your nut in in advance. Yeah, we go. And I'm just going to hold it like that so the nut can't move. And as I tighten it, you'll see there you go. it goes nice and rigid. A bit of those paper things floating around. So that's the construction there, just to sort of zoom in so you can kind of see it. The camera will do us the honour of focusing. So you basically tighten that up and it's pulled against this plastic and pushed it in that way. So that's the first one. So that was that was relatively painless. Although actually that wasn't the one I wanted to do. That's fine, because I can do this one. So we're going to get to a stage though, interestingly, where we're... You'll see. Um, basically, some things are easy to fit while everything's loose, and some things can't fit after you've tightened things up. So we'll discover anything like that as we go along. Let's poke that through. It's almost like a kind of IKEA thing, isn't it? Where you've you've got a flat pack case, which is nice. And they can keep the cost relatively low because it's like laser cut out of a piece of plastic where they can just do that billion of them. So that's looking good. Again, a bit of dust. Maybe I'm not going to worry too much about the old dust anymore. So this device would go in like that. And look, see, it won't fit. It won't fit like that, so we need to loose, loosen up. Loosen up, guys. Loosen up, dude. I'm hoping that's enough. Yes, it is. Uh, too much, if anything, but that's fine. Let's see if we can get that in. Right, so we got our gadget in. Let's see what hope in hell we have of sliding the other piece in. If not, you see, you have to... But basically, what you want to avoid is having to put that small nut on every time manually while everything's in place just because it's just awkward. I think that's okay. It's it's actually being pushed by these nuts. The nuts actually are, are pushing the PCB. I'm going to try to turn this one to see if I can get it on a flat. It doesn't interfere so much. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, not sure about that splaying. But let's just keep going, I guess. Let's keep going. I think I think that's a bit of a boo-boo in the design. Look, because that's hitting on that display, and there's no real way of avoiding it. Okay, no problem. All right, so we've got this end, which has the charging port. That just sort of locks in, it seems. Yep. Oops. Here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, hang on. There's a hole here for that charging thing, which means it goes in that way, which means it can't fit that side. Or can it? Ah, oh, plans of mice and men. How is that even possible? There we go. Whew. Let's just keep going. I think I can, yeah, that, that all makes sense now. And this is the one which had the sticky sticky on it, which I want to keep on the outer face so I can clean it afterwards. Right, phew. That was a bit bonkers. I think actually, guys, I'm going to save you the effort and I'm going to jump to a jump cut and get some more of these in first because this is going to be a bit fiddly. Okay, I was going to show it to you all put together, but I just want to just show you this before I go and put all the screws in. If you actually get all the, the parts of the case aligned, it kind of locks it all together. It's a bit fiddly to do it, but once you've done it, look, it's all locked in together. That's going to be a lot easier. Now, just want to show you why it's a bit of a pain in the aris now. Um, you can see the PCB is actually slightly tilted, but let's not worry about that. I think it's fine. Um, you've got to put these through, okay, like so. The problem is you've also got to put this nut 
in there. Now, if you've got tweezers, please use them because if you drop your nut in there, you're going to have a big problem getting it out. Yeah, you need it started. Once it's started, no problem. Yeah, you can see it started like that. No problem. Um, I can't think how you can do that without tweezers. That's my big concern for you. Let's try another one, just to make sure I'm t I'm doing it right. So I've got one in the tweezers, just like that. Yeah, putting in the screw, offering this down, just offering it into the hole and I'm not letting go I'm not releasing that thing until I know that that screw has got a few threads in there yeah once the th threads are through give it a tighten okay right ah only four more turns out doing this way is actually pretty quick really quick so yeah definitely invest in those tweezers and you can pack this thing together in an insanely fast amount of time. That would be by hand. That's going to kill you. But this way, mm -mm. not a problem at all. So one thing left to do though is to probably figure out what all the uh, switches and buttons do. So you've got S1, S2. I'm guessing one is just going to be a mode to go through the seconds, well probably not seconds, but minutes and hours. And the other one is just going to advance those. So I hope you won't have too much problems. So that's it ready to go now. So let's figure it out. And I'm going to look at my little phone that's near me and it's saying it's about 12.35 for argument's sake, just after noon. I wonder if there's a way to let you see that easier. Maybe. Here we go. Right. So that's one button. Okay, so this switch has a lot of pressure on it. That's why it's not clicking. Let's see what's going on here. So remember I said the PCB is slightly at an angle? Mm-hmm. You do. Good. Now, ah, oh, look, I even cracked the acrylic slightly. Uh, yeah. How do I do this? Okay, I can figure out. What we're going to do is we're going to loosen. In fact, we're going to take out the front here. And I do, I'm aware I've left the lights off. You can keep the lights off. Yeah. <laughs> that nut, that is it actually bonded in there almost. It's so tight, right? It wouldn't be easy if there was, you know, if there was something, if there wasn't something for us to fix, then it wouldn't be a, a decent kit, would it? And there's some stress on there for it to crack like that in there. So yeah, not so pleased about that. That's fine. I would say then, getting the front on last might be the way to go. Give you a chance to correct this. So yeah, there's no way for me to push that through without taking this front panel off, so let's just get it off. Something I sort of noticed, there's no filter on here too. Okay. So if you have um, certain filters, you'll be able to see the light better in certain lights, but then normally that's because you see things that are red. And this is a blue. Okay, so I can hear them both clicking now quite happily. So. Just push that down like that and then wipe it. Make sure you don't get your fingerprints if you can. Now we've got that nut in there. Let's get our nut that's jammed in. There you go. Come on, out you come. Ah! Okay. So I've confirmed though you should be able to get the PCB in. You should be able to get the PCB in afterwards if you've done the back of the case. There, yeah, that's something, that's useful to know. Right, that PCB is sitting pretty good now. It's not great, but it's not bad, it's just okay. Both buttons seem to be clicking. Just make sure then when you put it all back together that you can hear the buttons clicking. I think that would be my good, good advice to you. There we go, all those 
bits in. There's a bit of tape on the front. Let's try them again. Still clicking. Now we've got the joy. We've got the joy of trying to get this started. So you've got the the whole thing now is on a knife edge because the whole front panel just wants to drop off. But as soon as we get one of these got in there, we're on the home straight. And that home straight, we are on right now. So while, uh, while you're watching me do this, I'm going to give you an impression of a pigeon. Because I kind of think pigeons make the stupidest sound. Yeah, no, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, there we go. That almost went awry. My... Uh, focus on trying to do a pigeon impression just almost took this down but we're okay we're good final two then you can go and have a cup of tea then i can go and have a cup of tea i deserve one look at that six pounds or was it seven can't make up my mind what are the chances now once i put this in that button's going to stop clicking Gonna be all bound up. Nope, it's okay. I'm testing it as I go along. I have learnt my lesson before. I'm gonna ignore that little crack. You can't even see that crack in the video, can you? Last screw. This is gonna be the tricky one because this is the one that's touching the display, but it's okay. It doesn't seem too harassed. Right, now let's go. PCB is almost loose and wobbly in there. It's, it's. I don't know why. They're tight. It's just a roomy case. It's fine. If it's in, it'll fit nicely. That's a roomy case. That's all you got to worry about. So, 23 degrees C. Let's see the time now. The time is 12:39. 30, 39. 9, 10, 11, 12. What the hell's that? Is that the date? I don't know what those other things are. Uh, I don't know if you saw it there. Um, hmm. Not going to mess with it though. It's fine. So you've got the temperature here and you've got this light thing. But I don't know what the light thing does. Um, maybe that just changes the brightness of the screen but it might be you know cleverer than uh, me and it'll just do it over the course of a few minutes but that's it i'm sure the other modes will become apparent if you fiddle with them it's probably to turn on and off that temperature display and there's a clock so we're going to unplug it 1239 if you recall still 1239 going to mess with the buttons plug it back in 1239 so yeah that's it that is the clock of amazingness. I hope that's been uh, of some use to you and you've enjoyed its gubbins. Look at that. Find that kit. Make it. Let me know how you got on. As ever, guys. Thank you. Oh, that could be an alarm, by the way. I think that extra mode was the alarm. Who knows? As ever, guys, comment down below and thank you very much for watching.